Hey guys, what's poppin'? Jock Slay here. Welcome back to the channel. Hope everyone is doing well in these super wild times. Anyway, uh, today we're here to take the weirdness up a notch with a shoe that has a purpose, but you might not see it right off the back. It's definitely strange. So this is the Nike ISPA Drifter Gator, and it is obviously something out of a sci-fi movie, and you would be correct in assuming that it was something Nike designers just glued together and put out for people to buy because it honestly, that's what it looks like. But underneath the surface, there is actually a lot more to it. Uh, is that enough to get you to actually buy a pair? Well, that, I honestly don't know, but there is really only one way to find out. So uh, let's check it out. First, let's talk about the box. I've already unboxed a pair of the ISPA kicks in the past, so I won't harp on this box too much, but as a sneaker collector, I think people will really like this one. First, on the sustainability side of things, they are skipping the dyed colors on the box and just rocking with the plain brown and black. In my mind, that kind of speaks to the design ethos of the ISPA group, which is improvise, scavenge, protect, and adapt, but we'll dig into that a little bit later. You can actually find those words all over the box in different fonts, and you have certain, what I like to call, I guess, style touches, I don't know, that give the box this whole like scavenge vibe, like the blue sticker with the Oregon hit, the white sticker with the different languages, the issue 001 hit on the bottom of the box to give it like a sort of magazine vibe. It helps inform the whole scavenge part of the ISPA name by throwing all of these like random things onto the box. It's either a graphic designer's dream or a graphic designer's nightmare. As a consumer, I think it's cool. It adds character to the box, but uniformity, yeah, this ain't it. So with all that extra happening on the box, you would assume that the inside would be just as busy, but it's actually the opposite. There's nothing, literally just, plain brown and the paper is even the plain white paper with the Nike swoosh logo on it. And then that leads us to the kicks, these right here. When I first opened these up, I was trying to think of a word that would describe them and the only thing that came to mind was unique. I've seen a lot of shoes over the course of my career in the sneaker game and I have to say that the Drifter Gator is the most unique of the bunch. The, the lines on the shoe are weird. The shape is odd. The proportions are off center. The colors are almost boring and unexciting. But with all that being said, it feels like it has a purpose. There is something about this design and this look that makes you feel the way I felt when I took it out the box that it's intentional. Nike designers didn't just throw this together for funsies to see how people would react. They had a very specific purpose, and I think that purpose is protection. I know that sounds hella vague, but let, let, me, let me try to explain to you guys. So the design ethos of the ISPA is to improvise, scavenge, protect, and adapt. Basically, the Nike Sportswear Collective that makes up the ISPA team is tasked with listening to the consumer or athlete, if you will, as they call them, um, and creating solutions based on current and past styles, but ultimately modifying them in a way that elevates the use case or in some instances, creating new use cases. The way they do this is by adapting things from different genres and bringing them together in unexpected ways to create unexpected silhouettes. Case in point, the Drifter Gator. Taking a page from the book of the Vapor Max Flyknit Gator, a super unique looking silhouette that was created to find a solution to rocking Vapor Max in the rain. The Drifter Gator takes that same approach to protecting the Drifter, which released in that controversial, I'll say, split toe adaptation a few months back. And hence we have this like oblong and oddly placed pocket here at the heel that houses the shroud that they use to actually protect the shoe. Now, the original Drifter was a modern take on the Tabby shoe and the Gator version is simply an extension of that design in my mind. The split toe is gone, obviously, but you still get the same lightweight materials on the shoe to give you that same sort of comfort you expected from the original. Now, the way Nike is marketing the Drifter Gator is through the lens of traction and protection. The protection obviously comes from the shroud. To access it, you have to unzip this pocket here, unroll it from around, put it on your ankle and then attach it to itself. Um, after giving it a try, 
You can see the protection is really more about your ankle and I'd say your pants more than it is about actually protecting you like the Flyknit Gator. Even with like, even with like the shroud fully extended, it doesn't protect the shoes as much as I think it's going to protect your leg. In essence, it kind of serves as a rain boot of sorts, but it isn't giving you that full waterproof treatment you would get with like a full plastic booty. Nike clearly states that the net is water resistant. So while it may help to prevent you from getting wet, you probably shouldn't jump in any puddles with these just to be on the safe side. On the flip side, the shroud is really well built throughout. The inside features instructions on storing the shroud back into the rear pocket. They styled it like an airplane water landing instructions, which I think was a great way to kind of tie it all together. They also included hooks and loop tape, which along the lace overlays to make sure that everything stayed in place and didn't float around. Sorry, had to get at least one pun in there somewhere. Now, I know I focused a lot on this shroud and the waterproofness of the shroud and the shoe, but the traction actually plays a big role on this shoe. The outsole features a bunch of different sized rubber studs in various shapes and sizes, which should give the Orban Explorer a bit more confidence when moving through the city during those rainy days. The thickness of it all kind of reminds me of Nike waffle runners on the outsole, but the shape and thickness are definitely different. They even show a bit of love for the ISPA logo with uh, this transparent section right here in the middle. So it kind of gives you some transparent outsole where you can see right through to the bottom. Now, as far as the fit and the feel, they are pretty much the same as the Drifter, a soft EVA material served as like the main cushioning, but they also have some leftover Zoom X pieces that have been pressed together to provide a bit of responsiveness. And that's at the heel. And then obviously here at the forefoot and that goes all the way across the shoe. Just from walking around here in the studio, it does feel more firm than a pair of Reacts would, but it is by no means hard or anything like that. They actually removed the strobo board on these and actually glued the upper directly to the midsole so you get more of the cushioning than you would have if they had that barrier there. It's an interesting design trick. If anything, um, this shoe is what I said earlier in the video. It, it's interesting, it's unique. It, it pushes the limits and steps outside of the box in a way that I personally find really exciting. Sneaker designs for the most part haven't really changed much, then it takes something experimental to move that puck forward. While I may not personally be able to pull these off, I can see a few friends of mine that could put a full John together and make this look as natural as a pair of Air Max Ones. And that really is the beauty of sneakers and fashion. You aren't married to one single thing. If we all did the same thing, sneakers would just be boring. I, Definitely tip my hat to the ISPA team for looking outside the box and changing our expectation of what a sneaker can be and what a sneaker needs to look like. You gave this intention and purpose in a way that most sneakers never achieve and that I think is what really, really make these special. Now, for those looking to grab these, they released on October 8th for $220. They drop in this colorway, which they're calling Hyper Crimson, uh, which I imagine is this color. Um, and then they have a mostly black that they're calling Black and Coastal Blue that's gonna drop over on sneakers as well. Thanks you guys for watching. Hope you enjoyed this look at the Nike ISPA Drifter Gator. And just know that I appreciate you. I'll see you guys soon. Peace.